even if you are like Guitar George and know all the chords, that won't get you anywhere if you don't have some rhythms to use while playing chords behind a soloist. So let's make sure that that is not what is holding you back. Here are seven comping rhythms that will make you sound a lot better when you're playing chords. Some of them are a little bit advanced and might get you into trouble, but if you use them the right way, then they sound amazing. And I'm also going to go over some other essential things to consider when you're comping. The Charleston rhythm. It's quite magical if you think about it. It's a two note rhythm with a clear downbeat and some syncopation. This is probably the rhythm that most lessons start with and it really is a solid foundation. Here's a bit of Take the A Train using that rhythm. <laughs> And as you can hear, then it sounds full and clear enough to easily solo over it. A bonus with the Charleston rhythm is that it becomes a great exercise in anticipating chords as well, if you play a song with several chords per bar, because you play the second chord on the two and. You can hear this in another Stray Horn classic, Sad and Doll. As you'll see, what really matters is not the short rhythms, it's really how you put them together. But let's first get some more rhythms to work with. The chords I'm using to demonstrate these rhythms are shell voicings, which are simple and easy to play, three note versions of the seventh chords. You can use these to really get the harmony across and later you'll see how they also become a foundation that you can expand on, adding more color and extensions. I have videos on that part of it and I'll link to them in the description of this video. Now, in the end, this is more about the rhythm than the chords, and I think this entire video actually applies to other instruments as well, not just guitar. What do you think? The Charleston rhythm is very clear and very strong, but you don't want to play the same thing all the time. You want to have more rhythm so that you can really start to create something when you're comping. And luckily you can create a variation and add a lot more energy to the Charleston by making a very simple change. First we had a very grounded and clear Charleston rhythm. But check out what happens when I shift the rhythm an eighth note. You can hear much more energy pushing the music forward. Like this, it's great for intros, really helping us getting to the beginning of the melody. One thing that so many jazz beginners miss when they're starting out is that rhythm is in fact melody, especially when it comes to comping. And you need to think of these smaller comping patterns as words, and if you want to say something, then you need to put the words together into a sentence, and maybe even put the sentences together into a story. Now, already with these two patterns, you can put it together and create something that sounds really solid. Check out these first four bars of a train. <laughs> Let's do another transformation of the Charleston and actually play it upside down. And then I'll talk a little bit about how you practice these rhythms and really get them into your playing. The original Charleston rhythm is of course a downbeat followed by a more interesting offbeat on the two and. But what if we mirror that in the bar line to get a note on the three and? That really drives us to that one in the next bar. It kind of almost sounds like the kind of rhythm you would have in a stop chorus on a blues. Using this rhythm as a repeated riff is maybe not amazing, but check out how it works together with another rhythm, especially on the repeat. Let's level this up a bit and then add two new things, a longer rhythm and a repeated note. Here it is on A Train. This one also sounds amazing on a more dense progression like Satin Doll. These are all still fairly safe, but later I'm gonna show you some that are a little bit more 
complicated and risky. But let's first talk about how to get the most out of these short patterns. I guess this might end up sounding a bit like a paradox, but the first thing you want to do is, of course, to learn to play the rhythms either using a single chord or the examples that I've given you here in the video. You can, by the way, download those as a PDF on my website. But as soon as you start getting familiar with them, then you also want to spend some time making variations and inventing your own rhythms so that they start to open up a bit. It has to become a natural flow and something that you can improvise with. Just explore adding and leaving out notes to get some new ideas. This rhythm is a great way to make it lighter, move forward and really emphasize the swing. And you do this really without getting in the way of the soloist, which is of course also very important. It's also a nice exercise in being precise and being able to anticipate the chord. This rhythm is often associated with Red Garland, the piano player in the first Miles Davis quintet. And it is a great way to sort of really log in with the drummer and work on anticipating the chord. And as you can see, it also combines very well with other rhythms like this intro. Let's add some more double notes because it's a great sound and it's also a really nice way to log in with the groove and get the swing feel across. After that, we can get into some of those tricky rhythms. Check out this two bar pattern. See if you can spot how if you look at these two bars, you can see them as both being variations of the Charleston rhythm. Thinking like that can really give you a lot of useful options to explore. And check out how great this sounds on set and all. This is one of those rhythms that you don't use all the time, but even if you don't throw it in at random, it is very important that you're able to play it and not get lost if it comes along. And it's not at all that uncommon. Listen to Coltrane's Equinox. If you put this in the right place, then it sounds great. Now, working on rhythms and voicings is important when you develop your comping, but to really make it work, there are some other exercises that really bring it all together and helps you get there a lot faster. You want to check out this video to get started with those exercises. Learn jazz, make music.